If you guys followed yesterday's stream, we covered Boogie and the update to him possibly falsifying his cancer. But the update to that is actually one of you in my comment section told me that his brother on Twitter was allegedly vouching for him. Now his brother is a PhD. I don't know that this is his brother. I have no way to verify. Just some guy on Twitter who says he's a scientist, athlete, and loving father. We love that. Put out a tweet to say, to those who are trolling my brother, Boogie2988, he had to hashtag it because Boogie's Twitter is shut down. I can confirm that his diagnosis of polycythemia Vera is absolutely true and he has suffered with the debilitating condition for at least two years. I take my reputation as a health professional on that fact. And then he added Keemstar. Now I'm not sure what that means. Now look people are already like dismantling this guy as like a health professional because he's a PhD. I guess he's a college professor according to this but who knows what that means. Realistically it could just be Boogie was lying to his family member. It could be the family members lying along with Boogie. It could be that he genuinely believes his brother has cancer and he's vouching for him as his brother. But this is why I said yesterday and I clipped it out of my original post today that I posted but I said it in stream yesterday because I tried to shorten my clips for YouTube. I said yesterday that even if my siblings said they had cancer I'd be like show me the paperwork. Not because I think my siblings would lie but because I think my siblings are human and they might misunderstand. And it's nice to have all the siblings together researching this thing that we might be a misunderstanding. So his brother is vouching for him but the question if this is his brother but then the question is why wouldn't he just reveal it then especially for money. Now somebody in my comment section also said which I thought was um, kind of interesting. They said, what if Boogie's playing like 5D chess and basically trying to get people to offer him the most amount of money before he reveals that he does have cancer. Coffeezilla on his second channel ended up talking to Boogie and I listened to a few minutes by myself and I was like, oh, Boogie went off. We need to talk about this. And I want you to listen to how he sounds, his voice. Again, I only listened to a couple minutes on my own. So I'm gonna hear the rest of it with you guys for the first time as well. A YouTuber we accused of a crypto scam just got accused of faking cancer. You are faking your cancer diagnosis, Boogie. Despite being offered a total of $80,000 to prove everyone wrong if he could show his diagnosis to a private third party, he refused to do so, which is annoying because publicly he uses his cancer as a shield from any wrongdoing. In fact, when I confronted Boogie on his crypto scam, that's one of the reasons he used. I'm in pretty dire need of money. Uh, I have a lot of medical bills and I'm fighting cancer. And more specifically, why he had to promote the coin and couldn't pay back five thousand dollars the money's already spent that's it's it's at it's at mercy hospital right now it's gone i used it to pay debts i'll be honest the five thousand dollars is, is gone he says it's at mercy hospital i've used it to pay debts did you boogie did you use it to pay the debts i have no idea if boogie is faking cancer i also don't understand why he wouldn't just show it if he had a diagnosis but Either way, we won't know without an actual doctor involved. So I won't speculate on that. But what I can do is confront Boogie on this second claim, the cancer and medical bills, because I found out a few days ago that these statements were false. I know this because Boogie gave us a timeline of when he got paid in the first place. So when were you paid the 5,000? Five days ago. Later, I verified with Boogie this payment occurred on June 19th. And when Boogie said all the money was gone on June 26th, that gives us a window of time where he should have receipts for about $5,000 of medical expenses. Boogie, when I asked, agreed to share these expenses with me. And the following conclusions are based on him providing accurate records, which I know is a dubious idea. But when he shared what he had, it fell far short of even what I was expecting. He gave me two receipts for the time period, one for $154, the other for a copay of $60, a total of $214 by the time we talked. So where did the rest of the money go? Well, Boogie claimed that it was really intended for medical expenses after we spoke. And oh. Oh. I see. Oh, I see. Oh. When he said the money was gone, he meant it colloquially oh. and then accused me of lying. <laughs> wait, wait. Liar. That's on June 28th. Okay, hold on. It's about to get very loud. Okay, Boogie's going to start yelling. Colloquially and then accused me of lying. You wait, wait. Liar. That's on June 28th. You that's on liar. June 28th. You showed me a payment for 550 on June 28th, which is after we talked, after you told me the money was all gone. Yes! Have you never heard of the colloquialism? Yeah, that money's all gone. It's all spent. I have a specific thing I need to do with it. 
Have you never heard that colloquialism? Use fucking Google then. It's very common. I'm saying. I'm not used to this level of scrutiny. I'm not I can used tell. to this level of yes. scrutiny. This is mental health. I'm not a mental health professional, and I've only read so many books on the brain and psychology, so I'm an idiot, but listen to me when I say this. Have you ever had someone talk to you like that? I've had someone talk to me like this, and you're looking at them, and you're like, what are you doing? They lose it. They lose the plot. They lose the direction. They're screaming like a kid caught with their hand in the cookie jar, and they're screaming, I don't have the cookies as there's like chocolate smeared on their face. And when I meet a person like this, I'm like, you either need to go to therapy or there's something else going on. What is going on? And that's the problem. What is going on? How do we know what is going on in this situation? What is it? Okay, so I have a big problem with this because looking back at what Boogie said, it wasn't just the money's gone, which already means very specifically the money's gone, but he also says, the money's at Mercy Hospital right now, mm -hmm. which is a colloquialism I've never heard before. If you mean it's not at Mercy Hospital, it's at it's at Mercy Hospital right now. It's but even being as charitable as I can, adding in everything he calls medical expenses outside of our time window, like there was an $1,000 credit card payment. Okay, we'll just say that's medical, right? He's still only able to get me to about $2,500 worth of medical expenses for the month. Most mm -hmm. of it not to Mercy Hospital. Did he need the fatty coin then from where I was sitting instead of having spent the money on medical bills? It looked like he saved most of it because of his starting and ending bank balances for the month. Wait, wait, you're, you're taking, liar. you paid about 2,500. Like you're, you're set. You're also talking about money you haven't spent, which you're trying to add up to $3,000. That's not the $5,000 you said was gone. And then you're taking. Well, I told you it was four thousand when we started this conversation, but of course you're lying about that too. Boogie, can you explain exactly how you started the month with? It's like they change the goalpost every time you talk to them. And I'll be honest with you, I started to feel that way on the internet. And if you know, you know, there were people on the internet. I don't think they're on the internet anymore. I'm pretty sure they got suspended. Who it felt like when you would talk to them, they would like change the goalpost and it was getting really, that's how Boogie is. Boogie, like he changes the conversation every three minutes. So you always feel like you're getting gaslit because you're like, okay, we were talking about this. Why are you making it about this now? And it's because they know they're lying and they're changing the story. So you look kind of crazy because you can't follow the conversation because they're literally doing it to you on purpose. Only Boogie feels very pushed into a corner versus other people will feel more like they're orchestrating it on purpose. Boogie feels when he's pushed into a corner, he changes the subject every three sentences, which is partially why I think it's mental health in one way. For him to make the decision to do it would be an orchestration. For him to only do it when pushed into a corner feels more like a mental health reaction, I think, to getting caught, if that makes sense. There's something about it in which, because I put these in two different categories. I think people who talk this way are the most dangerous because they're unpredictable. They don't have values. They don't have consistency. They don't have anything to rely on. So when you're talking to them, there's no foundation of like sameness to agree upon. Coffeezilla is having a perfectly normal conversation, trying to meet a, a similar ground. And they can't do that because Boogie just, he lashes out from his own inability to set a foundation of understanding. $800 ended it with $5,000. You're saying the $5,000 you made from a crypto scam has nothing to do with it. I saved my ass off. That's right. The $5,000 Boogie made from a crypto scam has nothing to do with the $5,000 sitting in his bank account right now. That's there because he pinched his pennies. Now, when I pointed out, Boogie could have refunded the scam if he wanted to. He freaked out and told me he's got a mortgage to pay. Mm -hmm. Boogie, you need to pay that $5,000 back. You need. Okay, says backed into a corner or not. I can't think of a healthy per person reacting this way. And I think that's kind of the point is like healthy people don't react this way. Right now, it's not wrong to be unhealthy in a sense, as long as you own up to it. And you're like, I'm sorry, my bad. I'll work on it. That's different. But when you justify it, when you double down, when you accuse people of lying, like Boogie needs a lot of intervention. The question is, is he going to understand it, that it starts with himself? Like, I think that's the problem. I was like, you can have an intervention for somebody, 
but they still have to do the work to go to rehab. And in Boogie's situation, I don't know what he needs, which is a part of the problem. Probably mental health intervention, but not because he has a mental illness, but because he has learned behavior from trauma that is so obviously destructive. You need to find a way to refund Fuck people. You, it's spent. If I do, I won't have It's no not spent. You, you have five thousand dollars. No. Well, I can't. I won't have mortgage. But this is totally shifting the goalposts. Remember, the reason we were told the money was at Mercy Hospital right now, that was initially, now it's because he's got a mortgage. But also, Boogie had showed me his income for the last month. And it looked to me like the podcast is what paid for his mortgage. And so I asked, wouldn't that money pay for your mortgage? Boogie said, this month it wouldn't because he had to go on a special trip. And his co-host mm. was withholding all the money for that month. Do you understand? I'm You're not getting a pot. Where's your podcast payment coming from? You got that on the 30th. I, 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 it's being fucking kept so we could go for this goddamn trip. He sounds like a kid. I really, I think he's age regressing. If I'm going to be so fucking honest, I think he's age regressing. He gets the Francis voice on. Do you notice that he sounds like Francis? I think Francis is his inner child. I'm going to go full Freud right now. Not literally, but I'm going to pretend I'm an armchair therapist, okay? I'm not, for the record, if you're new to my audience, I'm not a therapist. I'm a loser on the internet who just reads books. But, like, listen, I think Francis might be his inner child because when he gets pushed into a corner, I have to pay my mortgage. He gets his Francis voice on. I'm going to rewind it for a second. But he gets, like, his character that was very destructive and threw tantrums on the internet that kind of made him popular. Fuck! You're kidding! Judge, judge. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, so listen to this. Yes. You're not. And his co host was withholding all the money for that month. Do you understand? You're not getting a pot. Where's your podcast payment coming from? You got that on the 30th. I, 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 it's being fucking kept so we could go for this goddamn trip. The money's coming out of my goddamn paycheck. So you're going on a trip. Yes, I'm being forced to go out there to film the fucking podcast live. I told him I didn't want to. He told me the business was going to pay for it. And then he just said he's not he's taking it out of the check. Now, later, I asked his co-host Keemstar about this. He like he like goes high pitched and he kind of sounds like he's complaining. He sounds like he's complaining. You know what I mean? Like he's he's like, this isn't even my fault. I didn't even do this. I didn't. Oh, uh, he, like he, he does <laughs> he, they made me, you know what I'm saying? Like he whines, he like, he's like a child, you know, there's something in his brain. He's 50 years old, 50. Okay. <sighs> he's 50. Discord says this conversation is reminding me so much of a specific person in my, in my partner's life, the child, like tantrums, constant goal, post shifting and gaslighting. Interacting uh, with someone like this in real life is so surreal. I've been there. It's so surreal. That's why I'm open, but with boundaries. I am open, but with boundaries. And when I deal with adults who are like this, I don't care how much of a bitch I come off as. No, ma'am. Open, but with boundaries. And I am putting down a boundary. And the boundary is me. See, you can't tell a boogie to change. You have to walk away. See, ultimatums, I don't deal with them. I don't play with ultimatums, okay? I don't I don't tell people what to do. I decide what to do with my life. So when I have a boogie in my life, I say, I love you. I'll see you in another time. It sounds like we're not gonna get along right now. I'll see you at a later date. And then I leave because I can't tell him to change. He's not gonna change. And if he changes, that's gonna be something he does on his own. It's not gonna be, be because of me, right? And I don't threaten people like, oh, if you don't change, um, if you don't change, I'll leave. No, even if you leave, maybe I need to leave. This is why I say like, be cautious with the people in your life because even if you love them unconditionally and you might love a boogie unconditionally, it doesn't mean you are responsible for a boogie, even if he'd beg you and whine you to be. And he seemed surprised. He said the show definitely pays for Boogie's mortgage. So I was confused. Mm. Later, Boogie was confronted on this by his co-host. Oh. And Boogie suggested maybe I edited the clip out of context. Oh. You told him that you weren't getting paid from this show. He played the fucking recording because he recorded you. Then what? Oh, shit. I, then uh, I understand that. Do you think people can edit things to be a little bit out of context? Well, if he wants to play that game, here's the clip where Boogie... You think Coffeezilla, who's literally known 
with well, that would be the scam of all scams would be Coffeezilla being a scammer. But Coffeezilla is literally all his integrity with his whole industry would be fucked if he took you out of context, my bro. Like if he literally tried to clip clip chimp him, it would have been completely like contrary to Coffeezilla's whole value system. Coffeezilla has very strong values. That's why he does what he does, allegedly, right? Like at least he seems to have very strong values, right? He directly says it. He says he's not getting paid. Buggy, you could have gotten through this month without the crypto scam is what I'm saying. It, and I could have not paid my friend back for covering my medical bill. No, no, no. You and I could no listen, 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 listen. Well, I've seen your I, I've seen your bank statement, so I know because you're ignoring I know the it's fact going to happen. that I need to pay mortgage. Yes, on your mortgage, Monday. right, which should have come There's from no the podcast. More money coming in. There's no more money coming in between now and then. Which you should have come it, but it should have come from the podcast. It's not. Right, because I'm not getting paid this month because I have to travel to do an on-location shoot. This guy is so manipulative. He has managed to move the story from uh, the money's at Mercy Hospital right now to, well, I have $2,500 of medical expenses at some point in the month to, well, the reason I'm ending the month with $5,000 is because I'm such a great mm. saver and I needed to pay my mortgage to, <laughs> no, actually that mortgage was paid for too. The last point I want to address is the accusations he made against me on his show. He says he should have never taken a call with me. He says I recorded him without his consent, despite me telling him up front this was all going to be public. And that I I'll be discussing this publicly. Would you like to comment on the story? I can give you a call to explain yourself. June 26, 2024, 3.50 p.m. I was approaching him for comment. This guy now acts like I tricked him. I should have never talked to CoffeeZilla to begin with. It was a joke, CoffeeZilla. Who told you That's, that? Uh, who oh, of course you, you fucking did. Who told Much you less that? a second fucking time. Then in this, by the way, CoffeeZilla records you without telling you he records That's you. Not Name true. a YouTuber does. Heads up, a lot of people record you without telling you. Trust nobody. Trust nobody. He told me. No, he did in the first time. In the first time. Well, I think it's worth showing you then how he talked about me behind the scenes oh. when he spoke with me because it was very different to what he's saying now. Now he's saying I'm taking him out of context, that he didn't know what was going on. Here's what he was saying back then. <sighs> amount of integrity. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, to be honest, it's I'm happy to do it. It's something that I really like people to know ahead of time. I mean, it's not yeah. – I, I try to play a long game with YouTube. I'm not interested in like a quick video. Yeah. Like who cares? Like I'd rather, yeah. you know, you look better yeah. and it, you get it, your it, point across than. I, and it shows that you have the integrity that I believe you did. 110%. It means, a, it means so much. Many, many YouTubers would not have done that for me. And you did. And I think that's incredible. And uh, I even, no matter what you have to say in this video, I'll never have a, a bad thing to say about you. Even on the show, I you're like, even on the, the low cow podcast where my job is going to be to attack you back, I'm just not going to do it. I'm like, no, I think coffee was fair. Uh, I'll be genuine, okay? Okay, thanks, Ben. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Of course. Yeah. All right. I really appreciate you. Thank you, man. Have a, great have a good night. Have a good night. That was a weird end. Why does everybody win their, end their videos so weird? Am I the only one with an end screen? I feel like you guys need an end screen. Hello. Well, I think this update solidifies sort of what we talked about yesterday. And I do think it's a combination of introspection and mental health. I do think that ultimately Boogie is responsible for the relationship he has with his, his lying. Being a liar is difficult. Or being a person, and again, I think it's childhood trauma, bros. I really do. I think trauma builds habits and you build habits that you think are reliable. And he thinks manipulation and changing the goalpost is a reliable way of communicating. And I think when it blows up on him, he then throws a tantrum and then people back off because they don't know what to do with him. And so then it just ends up being like, nothing happens because what are you going to do with a boogie? Like what, what could we really do to him? And then he throws a tantrum and deletes his Twitter. Not his YouTube though. For those interesting, Voidzilla is Coffeezilla's second channel. I'll go ahead and post the video in chat. You guys can go check it out if you'd like. Right when I heard him yelling into that phone, I thought to myself like, oh yeah, I've had these conversations with people. And when they have them, I just put down my boundaries and I say, hey, it sounds like we're not gonna be able to communicate today. It sounds like we're disagreeing. Why don't we try again next time? And then usually the next time never really happens because I certainly don't want to have it and they certainly don't want to have it. But they'll call you when they need money. They'll call you when they want to complain. They'll call you when they want you to feel bad for them. 
but they'll never call you again to figure it out. They'll never actually make an effort to be better. It's too scary. It's so scary to face yourself. Think of a healthy person. Now think of Boogie being a healthy person. What would that even look like? What would that truly even look like? It would not be this person. You know how we watched me yesterday on stream? We watched me from three years ago. And I was like, oh, look, I'm not that person anymore. Because I change. We're going to change. We're all going to be different people in a few years, right? Hopefully. Hopefully we're not Boogie, who's been the same fucking piece of shit for a decade. At least on the internet. Hopefully we will change. So we watched me yesterday talk about gender. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I like who I am better now for sure. But thank God I've changed, right? That looks like a different person. It's the same person, but she's a different person. Who would a healthy version of Boogie be? And look, we get healthier every year. We have moments of toxicity. We have moments of unhealthy. It's not about being perfect. I never want you guys to watch my content and think Brittany needs me to be perfect. If I wanted you to be perfect, then I'd expect me to be perfect. And girl, I am not perfect. The whole point is to really acknowledge that I think we're evolved animals on a planet and I don't expect the bear to be perfect. I just don't. I don't expect animals to be perfect, but I know they can get better. I have no idea what a healthy boogie would look like or who he would be, but I think he'd be somebody who took a break from the internet for a while and came back very different. He would have to have, ha ha he would have to have a fundamental change. I mean, he would have to get to the point where he didn't do some of these things ever again. And to not repeat a habit you formed for 50 years is a very big ask. I mean, it's hard enough for half of us to stop swiping on TikTok. I think I have to take into consideration everything. So with Boogie, I think it's pretty clear that he's on the very unhealthy, unhealthy, unhealthy spectrum of his journey. And I just don't know what a healthy version of him looks like. Bert says, will Boogie stuff continue for long? I feel like I'm done with that disturbing man. We're almost done. We're almost done. I'll bring it to a close. Basically all of this to say, I think Boogie is a one. I think he does have trauma. He's talked about it. So I don't, I'm not even you know, making it up. I do think he's unwilling to face himself. And because of it, this is where we're at. But I do think the proper educated mental health professional could really come in and change his life if he was ready to change. If he's not ready to change though, it's not gonna happen. And then it kind of reminds me of Sneeko, who's gotten so much more bitter over time. And I just like, bro, your bitterness is whatever you're doing isn't working. Getting the iPad kids who are already retarded from the vaccines and from all the social media they look at all day long. They, every day they wanna go, what's up brother? And they see the guy that they look up to, what's up brothering right up that hole. And now he's a hero because he changed. Same thing happened with Chris from Mr. Beast because white guys in America, they need to go undercover as victims because Otherwise, they're always going to be called Nazis. They're gonna be called, you know, the oppressor, colonizer. White people need a disability so they can either choose trans or autism. <laughs> Nothing against the guy. I don't, I, I don't understand. It must be for the pe the vaccinated autistic brain iPad kids. That's who it's for. You should, you should have a glow up. Where's your glow up? You're not getting it. You look worse. He looks more disheveled, more out of shape. Sneeko looks less, less, less fit and groomed than ever before. He was the prettiest, most well-groomed and making the best content when he was more progressive. Ever since Sneeko became more conservative, allegedly, he has looked uglier every day in spirit and more unhygienic. It looks like he showers less. I think that's important. I think you should look prettier. I think your life should reflect and you should look better. And that's how you know things are going well. Cause you either look, you know, you just look better. Diet Water says Sneeko's addicted to attention. He gets what he wants when he's being a jackass. I disagree. I think Sneeko never gets what he wants. I think Sneeko is desperate, lonely, and honestly afraid. Cause he's losing himself to this like game that he's playing. And I think that he is, he's looking for something. Like I said before, and I think he'll find it. Like I said, he's a very open-minded person that's Sneeko. He's very open-minded. That's why he's running around. People in America, for some reason, think open-mindedness means progressiveness or open-mindedness means pro-gay. Why do you guys think that? Can I ask you that question? Why do you think being open-minded means being pro-gay? Who taught you that? 
What bubble taught you that's what that means? Open-mindedness has nothing to do with political persuasion. It has to do with your willingness to consider conclusions, but it has nothing to do with what conclusion you make. So I don't know why people don't understand that. You know how many people I know who are very open-minded to serial killers? Not very many, not any really. But if you're open-minded to a serial killer, you're still open-minded. I don't know why people put like a positive spin on open-mindedness or a negative spin on closed-mindedness. Closed-mindedness is probably pretty good when you are thinking about serial killers. You probably don't want to be open-minded to serial killers. You probably want to be a little closed-minded. But also, maybe you want to be a little open-minded when researching them so you can understand them without judgment. But also, maybe in your real life, you don't want a serial killer as a brother-in-law. I'm so sorry, Dexter. You can't marry into the family. I'm a bit closed-minded. Actually, in relation to Boogie, Boogie feels like that kid that when he's being pushed, he goes like this. He like, he doesn't even become closed-minded or open-minded. He becomes nothing. He becomes like a shell of a person who just starts spitting off all these habits he's learned. That's what I'm telling you. Boogie's learned to talk this way, probably from his childhood. He's learned to talk this way, but not necessarily because of his parents. It could also be from his brain, genetics, upbringing, and environment. But he does this thing when pushed into a corner. It's like he shrinks and he just starts spitting off all the things that will protect him. I think Boogie's trying to protect himself. I just don't think he knows how. I don't think anyone ever taught Boogie how to protect himself. Diet says Nico is a slut for ideas no matter where they come from. And that, that right there. This is why I don't hang out with conspiracy theorists. I'm very close-minded to conspiracy theorists. The moment you sound like a conspiracy theorist, I shut my brain off and I'm not listening to you. I, you guys know this about me. I'm very close-minded. I don't give a fuck if you think we didn't land on the moon. I don't give a fuck if you think the, like there's flat earth. I don't want to hear you talk. Be quiet. I am not open-minded. I am close the minded. Chachi says, when I think of open-mindedness, I view it as a non-attachment to views, which connotates a lack of judgment in my opinion, but it also depends on the context as always. Yeah, it's all contextual for sure. I mean, I love a healthy conversation where we're being open-minded enough to have the conversation, but that doesn't guarantee a conclusion. I think a lot of people say, well, if you're open-minded, you'll come to the right conclusion, which indicates a rightness in relation to open-mindedness that I just, I don't understand why you're doing that. But I think you're doing that because society has trained you to say, if you're open, like, you know how many religious people come up to me and they're like, why aren't you open-minded to God? I'm like, oh my God, bro. Why aren't you open-minded to gay people? Because we all have our moments of closed-mindedness. We all have our limitations. Ribbit says in my bubble, when people hear open-minded, I think they hear accepting people different than others. in the we have to be nice to people way, but they probably only meet it up to a point. Every I agree. And I think everyone only means it up to a point, to a degree. People all have their limitations to what they're open-minded to. Maggie says open-mindedness can also be the willingness to accept that you're wrong and openness to the new experience and viewpoints. It is. I think it's all of these things. Open-mindedness is an opportunity for change, which Sneeko has changed a lot. Would you agree with me that Sneeko has changed a lot over the years? He keeps changing all the time because he's open-minded. Like, that's the problem. He's so open-minded. He's literally changing every way the wind blows, which I've been there. I have been so open-minded that I have switched views so many times to try to figure out which one I believe in. It's relatable. As somebody who's curious, it's relatable. And then you pick one and you go very hard on it. And he picked one that I wouldn't have chosen. And I don't think he should have chosen, but here we are. And so for me, like open-mindedness is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's obviously why your conservative parents are afraid of you researching liberals because you might be open-minded enough to be convinced to be gay. Have you, did you guys ever grow up in that bubble where they're like, you're so open-minded. I can't believe you fell for the liberal agenda. And it's like, you're so open-minded. You're so thoughtful. Look at you considering other people's perspectives. Like, look, I am curious about people, but I'm not about to become a flat earther because I've met a nice flat earther. Cass is open-minded to the point of gullible. I, I think, I don't think it's open-minded to a point of gullible. I think you're either, no, I don't know. I wouldn't call Sneeko gullible. I would call Sneeko stubborn because gullible is very specific, guys. Gullible is like two C's. People who fall for cults and people who fall for like, um, like, Sneeko knows there's something wrong in his bubble. You can tell by the way he's grooming. Like, you're 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 signaling to the world something is wrong, you know? But, like, gullible is, like, um, almost innocent. Gullible is, like, Ray William Johnson's mother-in-law going to Mexico to let that weird voodoo doctor cut open her eye to cure her blindness. Like, how can you be so gullible? 
because she's desperate. Maiden says, I think open-mindedness does well with a heavy dose of wisdom. Yeah, I agree. Kay says gullible isn't the right word for sure. Yeah, gullible is a very specific wor word. That means it's a very specific type of person that's gullible. To fall for something could be anybody. And gullible though is specific. Uh, Ian says, but you don't have to be open-minded to get your eye cut open. Exactly, good point, Ian. You don't have to be open-minded to get your cu eye cut open. You can be closed-minded and get your eye cut open. Great point. Ooh, cognitive says gullible isn't open-minded. It's weak-minded. Ooh, I think I would agree with that. I think there's a weakness to gullibility, like falling for something, like you're gullible. I, I could see that. I could see it. It's a little harsh, but I could see it. Maggie says I can relate to being in a bubble. That's just wrong. I almost feel bad for Sneeko. You know, as this older sister, I always feel bad for people, but... As an adult, I also know it's my job to let go of that attachment to feeling bad for people because ultimately, like, it's not our journey. It's just not our journey. It's theirs. And out of respect to their journey, they're going to have to do it. So feeling bad for people is just like, it's a it's a form of pity that I think is about our own attachment to the situation, for myself at least. I don't want to speak for you, but for myself. And so I work to let it go because, you know, ultimately, they're me in a different life. And I needed to go do my life. I know what it's like to feel like you just want to figure it out. And so I try to let people figure it out. Beezus says gullible has a desperation element to it. Mm. Connor says, I think Sneeko is weak-minded. I don't think Sneeko is weak-minded. I think that's absolutely not true. I think Sneeko is the opposite of weak-minded. He's so strong-minded. He isn't allowing himself to be gullible. And he's not allowing himself to be vulnerable. He's resilient. He's uncrackable. He's the most open-minded, closed-minded person I've seen in a while. But it is what it is. Some people are just like that. Someone's got to be him. Like someone has got to be Sneeko. And it just ain't me, girl. So good luck, bro. Ah, uh, Maiden. Good point. Maiden says, I'd say naive is rooted in the lack of experience, whereas gullibility has to do with being easily per, uh, pursued. Pursued or persuaded? Pursued? Pursued? Easily pursued. Oh, like prey, pursued, persuaded. Okay, you did mean persuaded. Okay. Yes, I, yeah. I think those little distinctions are so important. Baska says, but can't you also be easily persuaded because you're naive? Yes, but it's the chicken or the egg conversation. This is the nuance of conversation, by the way, I love. I could talk about this for hours because this is where I think the nuance lies. Were you first gullible or naive? Were you only naive and you fell for something or were you gullible because you fell for something? Did you fall for it because you were naive or because you were gullible? Like, I'm not a very gullible person and I'm not a very naive person, but I would say that if I'm ever fall for someone, it's my belief that they might just do what they think they're going to think they do. Like, they might just do what they think they will do, or they might say, they might actually do what they say they will do, but probably not. So it's more like I fall for the hope, but then I don't even fall for it because I always allow myself an opportunity for them not to go this way. Like, look. All those people who don't understand why I think Sneeko is open-minded, it's because you're not open-minded enough to get it. But also, you think open-minded only means positive things, and I think it is a much more neutral statement. You know what I mean? I think it is a much more neutral statement. Open-minded does not mean good to me. It just means open-minded. I don't put the judgment on the word. And closed-minded, same thing. It's like, well, in what ways are you closed-minded? Because that's where bias and prejudice also comes from. It's like people saying they're not biased or prejudiced. It's like, sir, it's like you, like, I'm only ever open-minded. I'm never closed-minded. It's like, we're not, be serious, please. It's like you're being so unserious about this conversation right now. Are you really not examining or doing any introspection work to actually say out loud? Of course, I've been closed minded. Is that really so fucking embarrassing and hard? Hayda says a naive person can be persuaded, but ideally will learn from that experience. A gullible person won't learn. Ooh, that's what you assume. I kind of agree with that, too. I think I like that distinction as well. Yeah, I think I agree with that, right? Livy says, I feel like a naive implies not knowing. Gullible implies knowing and being easily swayed. Ooh, yeah, I think I'm into that. Mm hmm. Yeah, the gullibility sounds so specific to me. Like, I'm really imagining. I have like a person in my head that I'm imagining versus a naive person. I have a very different person. Yeah, it's like a, f funny enough, it's in the stature of the body. This is so stupid. This is how my brain works. I love my brain though, okay? I think my brain is so great. Listen, when I think of a gullible person, this is what they look like. Okay? When I think of a naive person, this is what they look like. I feel like the shoulders being like this, it's like gullible is like, like they just, they're, uh, but then the naive person's like, oh, really? Hmm. Let me think about it. And then they're like, 
they kind of go with it. But, you know, there's a naive, there's like, I don't know. I feel like body language is really at play here. I just feel like, <laughs> okay, do you guys agree? <laughs> I, just, I just feel like that's, you know, I don't see Sneeko ever doing this. But I do see Sneeko doing this. Sneeko's always like, really? Oh, really? Whoa. Sneeko's always like, what? What? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Whoa. That's not gullible. Gullible is like, you know what I mean? Like, <sighs> it's different. <laughs> Cass says, why am I both though? Stop it. Diet Water says, gullible is middle-aged men being tricked into a crypto scam. Yo, the way I like dissect for categorization is everything, mood, texture, smell. It's why I think it's so nuanced because Sneeko could look like so many other categories and Boogie could look like so many other categories, but the nuance of the separation comes with something as simple as how the shoulders are facing. And so that's why, that's why for me, I'm like, no, that's not right. So when people are in my comments trying to be like, remember when Brittany said Sneeko was so open-minded? Like they have no idea. They have no education level to follow the conversation. Just zero way for me to communicate with them to get them to understand like, we're not having the same conversation, Habibi. Like, Habibi, we're not having the same conversation. Cause you can't, you don't get it. Like you have no idea. Pearl says, okay, the shoulders actually help me understand what you were saying. I know, I'm telling you, you gotta, like if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Yes, Halian says, I have different caricatures for ideas in my head too. Feelings from, feelings have images. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love this conversation, bros. This is my bread and butter. This is my jam. This is my, I love this. Mm, Sleepy says, to me, they describe the same person, but they describe a different speaker. If you call someone naive, you're Probably less malicious than if you call them gullible. Ooh. Mimi says, if Boogie's classified as a one, would a Sneeko classify as? You know, I always thought Sneeko was like a four. He could be a four pretending to be a two, or he could be a three picking a bubble. But Sneeko's probably a three. Or a... Uh, he's probably a three, more or less. Which is just really a glorified two. Sneeko's too curious and too self-aware and too good at life to be a, a, a one, but he's also too full of his ego to be like a four or five, but he's also too self-aware to be a two, but he's probably just a three, something like that. He's got to, he knows better. Even though he doesn't act like he knows better, he does know better because he can explain it. The problem is, is he doesn't do it. And the fact that he doesn't do it is so, he can't even be fully Muslim because he knows it's bullshit, dude. He knows it's bullshit. He can't go full two. He's trying and he can't do it. He can't go full two. He can't go 100% into anything he's doing because he knows it's bullshit. He knows he doesn't fit there. He can't find a bubble and he's uncomfortable because he doesn't belong and he knows it. That's my theory. My theory is he feels constantly like he's out of his own skin because he's not in the right bubble. He's haraming left and right, bro. This man is a haram junkie. And it's because he knows he's not in the right bubble and he just hasn't found it. And so he feels like an unshowered mess. This man looks like he hasn't groomed in months. He tried, he tried open relationships. He tried the progressive bubbles. He tried modeling. He tried YouTube. He's been trying all of these bubbles. Yeah, Maiden said he's trying to be a two and it's making him ugly. I 100% agree. He's trying to fit into a bubble and it's just like, it's not gonna work. He's not, yeah, Maiden says some things you can't fake for sure. Yeah, I think he's just trying too hard to fit in and it's, it's not gonna work, but we'll see how long he lasts. I think he'll burn out. I think he'll crash really hard. He hasn't hit a rock bottom yet. So let's see what it's going to be. Mimi says, you know who Sneeko reminds me of? Weirdly, Pierre XO. What do you think of the conversation between the two would be like? Uh, between the two? Honestly, I think they'd hate each other. Pierre just seems very unwell to me. Slightly manic. Sneeko isn't manic, right? Like, S Pierre seems genuinely unwell to me. Like, possibly psychosis unwell. So I don't know. I don't, I try. Pierre seems very strange. Um, but I think they'd hate each other, bro. <laughs> I just think they would hate each other. Both their egos in the same room, the world would explode. I do wonder what bubble Sneeko will eventually land in. Look, some people find their way and you'll see them. Guys, look at the YouTubers. Look how comfortable they are in their bubbles. They know what they're doing. They know how to make money. They know what their life, they know what to argue. They know how to make, they, don't, they know how to make sense of their life. Sneeko obviously doesn't know how to make sense of his life yet. 
but he's not bad at it. I mean, he's bad at a lot of things, obviously, but he's still doing more than the bare minimum. You remember going back to the kind of start of the conversation around bare minimum? Sneeko's doing more than the bare minimum. He's crashing hard because he's riding a wave of going beyond but with the wrong motivation. He doesn't know the direction. Maggie says, how does the bubble theory apply to neurodivergent people who can't find a bubble due to their own social impairment, but aren't necessarily self-aware? Everyone lives in a bubble. So they just end up in the bubble they were raised in probably. Like everyone just ends up in a bubble anyways. The question is, are you ending up in a one you're aware of? Do you think it's the whole world? Do you make your own bubble? Like you always end up in a bubble. Like I live in Europe, that's a bubble. I'm American, I'm from that bubble. So if you're neurodivergent and you have a social impairment, but aren't necessarily self-aware, you just end up in the bubble you were in. Everyone lives in a bubble, you can't escape the bubbles. From my understanding, there's no evidence to escape perception unless something happens after we die. Maybe after we die, we get to escape perception. Connor says, do you think there's a bubble for him or does he have to conform to a bubble? No, I think he has to make a bubble. No, I think Sneeko's gonna make a bubble. That's why I thought he was a four. I thought he was making his own bubble. But it looks like he's not. It looks like he could be, though, technically. I don't know Sneeko that well, guys. I just don't know what's in his brain. It's not like I talk to him every day or something. I don't even, I haven't talked to him in over a year. I don't know what he's doing. So for me, what with what I know about Sneeko behind closed doors, but I know about Sneeko in the public, I'm coming to that conclusion, but I don't know what is really going on in his brain. So he could be uh, experimenting, you know, because I know a four right now who's trying to be a two again, and that's kind of fun to watch. And that's been an interesting thing. I know fives who kind of go back to two bubbles. I know fives who are trying to find more bubbles and go beyond. I know people, I just know people who are doing all types of things. The question is, which one is his story? Remember being a, like a whole human being? Who are you in the story? I don't know which, I don't know who he is in the story yet. I don't know who Sneeko is in the story yet. And that's the thing. Who will he end up being? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think the internet is smart enough to understand him or see him. But I know that he he's doing something interesting. I just wonder what it will be. I think he'll have to make his bubble. Connor says, is Sneeko what happens when there isn't a bubble for you? Um, I think Sneeko is what happens when you try to fit into a bubble that isn't for you. So yes, but kind of. There's always a bubble for you. You either make it or you find it. But Sneeko keeps fitting into bubbles that aren't for him. And he keeps trying to make it work. Like Sneeko is literally like, like shoving himself into the bubble. And he's like, look guys, it fits. And I'm like, you, you look very uncomfortable. He's like, no, 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 it fits. And I'm like, okay. He's like trying to fit his size fucking 12 foot into a sick shoe. And he's like, it, it, it works. I'm like, it's girl, it's not working. He's like, no, 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 you don't get it. It's, it works. It's not working. That's why when I meet religious people that end up religious and they fit into the bubble, I'm really happy for them. When I say follow your joy, I mean find your bubble. Make it or find it. So many people are so peaceful in religious bubbles. Not Sneeko though. Sneeko doesn't fit. It's never gonna fit the way he thinks. And that's why I say like, it doesn't, I don't, no. Like you're not joyful. I'm sorry, you're not. You're not joyful. You haven't found your bubble, bro. You know? Mimi says, I don't want to have a bubble. They're so exhausting. Oh, that thought is scary. A person with open-mindedness without guardrails, aka morals and values, creating a bubble scares me somewhat. I mean, everybody has a bubble. A bubble is just perception. A bubble is your perception because the moment you perceive, like right now you're in my bubble, but I, you're still in your own bubble because we're on the internet, but you're in my bubble on YouTube right now. And like, we're all together forming a bubble. Then when we all leave, we all go back to our own bubbles, but then internally in our minds, because we have perception, that's also a bubble. Like a bubble is perception. It's an awareness. Like the bubbles are just you collecting data and explaining information. So like I'm in the bubble that likes applesauce. I'm in the bubble that perceives applesauce as something delicious. But also I don't live there all the time because I also like other things than applesauce. It's like a bubble is a beautiful thing. A bubble is just your understanding of perception. You're saying I know myself. I know myself to know where I belong. And I, I hope that for everybody. Halian says, exactly. He so desperately wants a community that he's trying to shove a square peg into a round hole instead of just digging his own hole. Exactly. Yeah. Other people I see, I'm like, oh, look at the bubble you picked. How interesting. As long as it makes you joyful, it's none of my business, you know? As long as you're joyful, it ain't none of my business. It's when people aren't joyful 
that I look at them, especially when they doubt me. How dare you doubt somebody who's happier than you? <laughs> How dare you doubt somebody that's more joyful than you, who complains literally way less than you? When people are complaining less about their life than you, you better not go around being like, I think you're wrong. No, no. Okay, mind your business, you know. But that's why I say, like, don't come and complain to me about your life and then expect me to be happy for you. If you complain about your life every fucking time I see you, I'm not happy for you, bro. Something's going wrong. The audacity of people to complain to me and they'd be like, why do you think my life's not good? Um, bitch, every time we talk, something bad is happening. Every time I see you, something, girl, listen to, that's what I mean. People tell you who they are. They will let you know when they're unhappy. They'll say it. They will say it. There's that TikTok I love of the four girls just eating food. It's like ASMR of them eating. And it's like when the boyfriend's been good this week and there's nothing to complain about. When there's nothing to complain about, you got nothing to talk about. That's, I made my mother-in-law cry because every time she sees us, we always have good news. And she's like, ah. she's like so relieved. And my parents too. And that's how I know. And that's how I know that my life has changed because every time I talk to anybody, it's only good news. And I'm like, holy fuck, that's fucking cool. I've never been this, you know, I've in the last few years, but especially in the last like two years, especially after moving in with somebody. Yeah, every time I talk, it's like great news. Everyone's relieved, I'm relieved. But let me tell you, I don't want anyone to think you always have to have good news. It's okay to say I'm hurting today. It's okay to say, hey, my fibro sucks today or hey, I haven't been able to shower in four weeks or like, hey, I'm really struggling. That's okay too. You don't always have to have good news, but you probably most of the time want to have good news. You know what I mean, guys? Again, it's not about being perfect. I don't want to send the message out to anybody that you have to be perfect. You just got to aim for healthy, which is part of being healthy is admitting out loud, I need help. Things aren't perfect. I'm actually feeling quite bad today. Okay, so I just want to say that. You know, in my head, in real life, I'm in bed. My belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So, why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.